All right, guys, we're gonna check out what has happened in the auction so far. We're about halfway through the auction, but we noticed a lot of people were grabbing their stuff already. Uh, so we wanted to do a quick walkthrough, kind of show you what has happened, show you some of these sales prices. Uh, we're gonna start off with something you saw Mike from Free Play buy. I got here a little late today. Um, grab this red tint, 975. Both sides working, both sides awesome. And with the original Hogan's Alley pistol, that's awesome, really, really cool. Super excited, and I think he was probably a little nervous, but I think he knew he did really good. This is funny, because this, I don't know if you've ever seen a walkthrough. This actually came out of our warehouse through some weird series of events. DJ Terminator Mike B stuck us with this. Uh, it, it wasn't a direct deal or anything. He put two TVs. He was trying to build his own cocktail versus cab. Um, it sold for $100, not to us. So we're pumped. We're, we're, I mean, I hope whoever bought it loves it, but it was not something we ever wanted and we're happy to see it go. Um, you got one of these 20th, 20-year uh, reunion cabs with Galaga Miss Pack. Had an LCD. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it had a 16 one Sold for 700, which is a decent deal if it's a real game. But if it's a 16 one eh, a little, little more shaky. Uh, now we got this hilarious $900 uh, Street Fighter 2 New Challenger. Um, this is probably like a barcade type purchase, I guess. I don't know. Um, not a good purchase, for sure. Uh, it's the not a great version of Street Fighter, obviously. It's not super turbo. It's not hyper fighting. It's not even CE. It's new challengers. So it's uh, not well loved and kind of a kind of junky. You had a mispack for 600. I don't know anything about it, but that's a. Uh, Seems like a fair price for a, uh, it's a little toasty, a little dirty. All right, it, it might be a little high, but not too bad. Next to kind of a, a truly routed Pac-Man with a tiny little computer monitor in there, a cardboard or craft paper bezel. Uh, Play Choice 10, I don't think turned on for 500, um, but if it didn't, it wasn't doing so well. A glitchy kind of busted Star Wars, 2200, probably high, but hopefully the person that buys it loves it. Uh, lots of button problems, but you always have problems with those thumbs slowly going out, you gotta replace them. Uh, Super Turbo, another issue. Uh, it's, it has an old 16-in-1 burn with kind of like a Qbert pyramid right there. Uh, running some sort of uh, generic version of Super Turbo, not the green board, not Grandmaster Challenge, but regular Super Turbo. And a 19-inch Dynamo, 600 is probably still too high. Uh, Frogger 500, I guess it had some issues. I, I was, this was one that we were considering um, since Frogger is one of our staples. Didn't end up with it. $500, eh, kind of a, kind of a high price. Gorf not working, 625, that's pretty crazy. It was almost working. Uh, speech was not working as well as it should. Some of the buttons were off, a lot of lighting problems. Uh, high prices at the beginning of this auction. A really, really, really routed Galaga. Uh, computer screen inside, 60 and one, I assume. Uh, extreme hunting that was, uh, eh, uh, the monitor was okay. It had some pretty extreme, extreme hunting burn. Um, not too bad. And no, if you'll notice here, uh, none of the games that we bought are here. We've got them moved off to a separate side. We'll show you those in a few. A kind of nice looking multi -cade. Looks like they at least tried. Uh, 450, I don't know. Probably a fair price. I don't really. No, this was kind of cool. Um, so a Mars, and I don't know anything about this game. Uh, and it doesn't happen all that often, but it's, it was you know a vertical space shooter in kind of a cabaret cab. Um, it had the dual joysticks, but it, 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 it was working-ish, not great. Um, and I've never heard about it. It definitely wouldn't be popular in free play, but hopefully this is some sort of collectible game that, that people love. Space Fireboard, you've seen some in our uh, Warehouses, you've seen them in the collection. We used to have it out at Free Play Richards and didn't perform great. Now, 350 for one in this condition, you'll see that this, it's, it's seen uh, some, some rough days. Broken wood, um, control panels probably rusted through. Um, Tempest Cabaret, not fully working. $1,000. I love these, these cabarets or the Tempest cocktails. I think the Tempest had some of the coolest form factors in arcade history. Um, but I think $1,000 for this exact situation, this one was was tough and they've also had it so close to the other games that i just assume that those the sides aren't so hot um whoa i don't know what happened here guys the pac-man 975 um i can't even looks like it might be an lcd in there could be a tube uh, i i don't know i don't have a clue uh really bad multi-k 125 with the computer monitor inside a stunt cycle that was not not working well um but here it is at $500. Um, it's turning kind of now. Um, it was seized up before, so someone got in there and really broke it up. Uh, time Pilot and a Taito, um, 250. I assume they're buying it probably for the cabinet. Um, 
Simpsons, right joysticks, but it's a cool, weird conversion I've never seen called Rim Rockin' Basketball by Strata. Strata. Um, but what's really cool here, and I love, I love like the operator ingenuity of the time. So they had this slant, they just installed the side art kind of sideways, but they made the guy so he's standing up kind of straight. Um, I love it. Uh, it's a Simpsons. It worked kind of, it's kind of rough. A25, I don't know, that could be a fine deal. Um, <laughs> so people are going to watch this on the internet. Knights of the Round and kind of a ratty conversion that I was interested in, but it's still not great. Uh, $900. I think most people on the internet would hit me in the head if they heard I was paying more than $500 for that. Um, Marvel Super Heroes, that was, it was fine, but this is uh, a midway cab. Um, not, not exactly what I would have done. $900 is a really high price. The monitor was okay, though. T2 looks like it went for $525. Had some issues. Space Invaders went for $500. Um, I like Space Invaders. That's probably a fine deal. If it was a dollar less, I would have been into it. Uh, emulated Robotron went for 550. We had a couple Robotrons here. Uh, all were uh, emulated and suffering pretty bad. This was in fact just a 19 in one, so uh, even worse than normal. Here, we're gonna try to weave in here. Miss Pack LCD 125. I think there's probably some people on the internet that would see that and say that cab cabinet seems okay. It's not working. We're gonna go kind of snake here because we're right by the bitter, being action. We've got this cool gun blade. This has been in a couple auctions now. Uh, 250, I don't think it turned on. Then we've got this really cool, uh, the, 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 the concrete cab that we talked to y'all before. Uh, very, very interesting, very cool, very secure. Um, next to it's the SCC Chaos you saw last auction. Looks like it sold for 350, it was about the same price. Converted Gauntlet Legends. All right, and we're gonna cut here and we're gonna try to snake in and, and pick up back on the other side. All right, guys, we hit up that SBC Chaos. We had an 88 games here, uh, kind of one of the track and field uh, style games. I don't know what happened. Don't know, it's, a, it's got a Neo Geo control panel. I don't know anything about this game except for it sold for $175. So hopefully at least turned on a little bit. This lock-on um, was kind of working, was okay. Has the um, Star Wars uh, controls there, which is kind of interesting. Normally it has the different controls. I, I imagine whoever bought this, uh, probably bought it for this yoke. It's pretty valuable. Uh, Magic Sword was, uh, man, not playing well. Kind of in rough shape. Um, 550 seems high to me, but I, I do love magic swords, so maybe they just liked a lot. Broken space gun for a hundred bucks. Uh, you can see the plastics all kind of damaged. It happens, but if you ever see the one that we have out, I think it's at free play dinner right now. Minty, really cool. This is probably a fine deal. A decent Neo Geo 4 slot. It seemed to be in good shape wood wise. 675. Four games that don't really matter, um, but still kind of cool. Uh, Area 51 Site 4 that was running a combo with just Area 51 and Max Force 650. I don't know, seems a little high, but not too bad. Uh, I did bid on that one. I really would have liked to pay about 500 for it. Uh, emulated, didn't turn on computer monitor. They still got 50 bucks, so uh, go them. This was not whatever Cosmo Gangs is. A different Varum game, I don't know, 150. I hope they're happy with that. One of the smallest computer monitors I've ever seen in one of these. Uh, Neo Geo one slot style cabinet with really, I mean, conversion, bad button placement. $50, uh, it's some, some trash. Now this is what's kind of funny though. You've got kind of this terrible rough cabinet and then you've got a dedicated speed buggy. I don't think it worked, but it's dedicated speed buggy. Um, a cool game, uh, not, not bad at all. It's only sold for $20. So I guess everyone really hates speed buggy. I kind of like it. Um, We've got a Neo Geo marquee and a cool Bally Midway cabinet um, that I think I cut at the top. $200, I like it, I think it's fun. Um, not for me, but seems neat. $25 generic, who knows, computer monitor. Like, I mean, this is like 17 inch, 15 inch computer monitor. Um, I can't believe those even exist. Like, who is out there? Two player Spider-Man I've never seen has a three button control panel they turned into two. It's over 750, oh my God. Um, I mean, it's one of those cool Bally Midway generic cabs, but uh, Spider-Man's not a two-player game, and well, it's not that valuable. 750, that's crazy. Uh, here you go, <laughs> Magic Sword for $25. I don't think it turned on, I had a computer monitor. Looks, looks rough. Uh, this had nothing inside of it. Um, it's got like a Punisher control panel, a Vigilante marquee, um, something called Cross Canadian Ragweed on a sticker. $10, I think they got what it was worth. 
Uh, Miss Pack cab sold for 25, terrible condition. Um, UFO Robo Dangar didn't turn on, not sure what's in there. Uh, we talked to the guy who bought it, accidentally bid on it, ended up buying a game for $10. I don't think he'd be too sad, except now he has to move it somehow. Uh, Tekken 3 with this uh, beautiful, beautiful screen. $125, geez. Some of these games get nuts. Um, I don't know what this was, a vertical uh, shmup maybe. 125, not bad. Uh, the ones that we bought are not are no longer here again. Uh, Ultra sharp, this is funny because it's the CRT uh, monitor back there. So it's a tube, 15 inch or so, computer monitor. 100 bucks they got for this one. Um, this one looked kind of cool, kind of neat. I don't remember what was in it. 175, these were rooms. Um, there's, there can be hidden value here. Here's this uh, Valley Cincy cabinet. Uh, we did a whole game of the week on it. You see this beautiful bezel and everything. It was running um, a kind of a weird dino bomberman type game. Uh, but the monitor was actually in good shape. 225, I was probably already too high on it. I'm glad I didn't get it. Turkey hunting for 150, sounds good. This was doing okay. Um, I feel like we saw this in another auction, $75. These pedestals are hard to sell, they don't sell well. Uh, this Golden T4, um, you know of course that we love four completes, we think it's the best version, and this one can actually run that. It's the right cabinet and everything. Uh, fun fact, this, is, this came out of Ark. Um, it was one of the lot purchase games that we had and we ended up getting 150 for it. Awesome, we, didn't, we were just kind of tired of having it. A big buck with a decent screen sold for 350. This, oh, and it's, oh man, it's a Neo Geo, that's funny. Um, bad stuff got converted all the time and it's, that's rough. Um, but it was it was in good shape, so maybe 350 wasn't so bad. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt gutted that it needed you. This G lock that everyone keeps trading at the auction, a sit down G lock, messed up plastics, turns on I think sometimes fifty dollars. I don't even know, guys. Like we're seeing the same games come to auction a lot, so uh, it makes me a little concerned that the stock out there is is getting kind of soft. A punch out that turned on that looked awful, eight hundred dollars and. Uh, if you're watching this, know that I am no longer in the market ever again for punch out, I don't think. Um, everyone fondly remembers it, but it, it performs really poorly uh, at free play and generally turns people off to the game, whereas Tyson's punch out on the Play Choice 10 does well. So um, even though I know that's like arcade kind of like sacrilege to say, punch out does worse than Tyson's punch out on the Play Choice 10. Um, Showtime. Rough monitor, it's an okay cabinet. It was an okay shape, 750. I would have liked to pay 700, 600 maybe. Went a little high. Joust, not working, but um, it's all there. It's complete for 450. I think it's a cool deal. You can see it was someone else bought the auction for 400 at some point. Uh, I don't know, you can see there's an old auction tag behind it. So uh, they did good putting it back in. Boot Hill, a really, really cool game. Didn't turn on, was busted. 275, but the cabinet's in good shape. So if this is your if this is your style, not bad. Uh, Jurassic Park 3, I guess they passed on? I don't know. Uh, I watched them messing with it. I guess it never turned on and they just moved on. Uh, another stunt cycle, C's too. Um, 250, coins but won't start. I, I really want to put a black and white Atari in our in free play at some point, but we haven't found that right opportunity. Okay, Simpsons, wasn't really working. Um, kind of in rough shape. Uh, 950, didn't turn on. Um, really shocking sales price, um, too much. Uh, which I love Simpsons, but that's, that should have been like $500 given this condition. It, it, it's not anywhere near floor ready, home ready, garage ready. It needs a thorough work through. Uh, Greyhound video, a gambling game, kind of a five card draw type game. $35, so probably a good deal. I kind of liked it, it looked fun. A uh, zombie ray that didn't turn on. Also though, it has these really cool wood um, kind of gun butts. And if you remember our walkthrough of our Denton lab, we are custom fabricating new resin gun butts. So pretty cool. We actually considered for a long time carving wood like this. So I, it's neat to see it in the world, a uh, hundred bucks. It wasn't turning on. I, that sounds high, but not, not like a bad high. Uh, then you've got a lot of these just kind of trashed um, generic abs. This is probably a Data East with a round marquee, $45. So you know, if you're watching at home, this is probably why you should come out. It's a pretty good deal. Neo Geo One slot style, uh, 25 bucks. A Strikers Dynamo cut corner, $75. None of them were really working, but probably some, some value there for someone. A $50 cut corner with the, I mean, this at least has the real monitors. You could possibly bring it back.
This was that space tool I bit on. Uh, I turned on, and it looked a lot rougher the longer it was on. Uh, still got 750 for it. Those 6100 Vector monitors are strong, uh, and I, I half regret not buying it. Arlington Horse Racing in a uh, Atari System 1 cab. Uh, another game you probably saw in the ARC walkthrough. Glad we got 70 for it. It wasn't ours. Um, uh, originally got in a lot. Uh, joked about putting it out at Free Play Arlington. And then it just sat there, so we, we, we got out of it. It didn't turn on or anything. $70, not bad. Here is an empty space tool we had laying around. Uh, 25 probably a good purchase for someone. Got, got the control panels worth at least that. Um, but we actually, we inherited it for free, so we're just happy to get the space. And of course the wood and stuff is, is pretty gone, so that control panel was probably the, the only value left on it. Of a room, something, <laughs> $75 might maybe it turned on. And we're just gonna kinda go through these. The room, cut corner, cut corner, $25, $10, $10 Data East round. Uh, one of these Atari, I, I've never seen this control panel overlay, but some sweet $100 bills right there. Um, $60, so maybe they upgraded for this control panel. More dynamos, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. None of them are really turning on, and a lot of them had uh, concrete inside of them, so uh, no one was super happy about it. A rough Neo Geo 4 slot conversion, um, $25. Rough kind of pack conversion, $10. Oh, look though, you can see the Galaga marquee underneath. Um, so that's, that's interesting, it looks like it got painted over. Rough Tekken 3 that used to be some sort of baseball game. Got $10 for it. I mean, guys, there's some value here. These, of course, we talked about, filled with concrete. So they're not gonna be very easy to move around. Uh, kind of uh, redemption spinner. 50 bucks, okay. Tekken and what is this? Um, like the, uh, I know this, like the football. Yeah, the rugby game. I can't remember what it's called, but Tekken, 100 bucks, probably a good deal. Pack plus. Wow. Um, 225, maybe it turned on or something, because that is, it is a lot. If you look over here, it's covered in dust. Um, it's a pack cab. I'm gonna have to put the control panel back on. It is in rough shape, but 225, wow. Impressive. And then, uh, Strikers, another room. I mean, we got the Karnov control panel overlay, Strikers 1945, LCD, lots of um, projects if you're in the, in the market for it. This Play Choice 10 that um, looks like it has a real board in it, went for 300, but that's about all you're getting out of it. Uh, really, really rough shape on a lot of this stuff. The Super System with the LCD and the, the JAMA, is, this is not a Super System board, it's an actual JAMA Super Nintendo. Um, but for 400, you might be able to get the value out of it. Um, it was playing, uh, I think, the uh, Mario All-Stars cart, so they had each Mario game, uh, which was one of the things that Varum did a lot, so I assume this came out of Varum. Lethal Enforcers for 150. Um, cool. <laughs> These monster um, Alpine games, uh, the skiing games. I, they were a lot of fun back when arcades had them in the late 90s. Nowadays, it's, it's mostly trash. They sold it for $1. Uh, and it might have been a buyback. $50 for the America's Army or Ghost Squad. I don't know which one this is. I didn't turn on, but you know, the gun is worth something. So 50 bucks to haul the parts away. Definitely money that could be made if you happen to own a trailer or a truck. Uh, this Primeval Hunt. This is, I've only seen this game before in auctions. It's always really huge. Uh, $125 sounds high, but I don't know. 400 for this Time Crisis 3 with the projection screens, that's a lot. 225 for the single that comes with, I guess, a double uh, gun. 25 for Crisis Zone, and you know guys, uh, it wasn't complete or anything, but I have never seen a game lose as much value as Crisis Zone has. When I first got into this, uh, like eight years ago, nine years ago, however long it was, you see Crisis Zone selling for three or four thousand dollars, and about a year and a half ago, two years ago, you just, you, are, you, you can't give them away, they're not worth the parts. Um, $25, now again, it's not complete, it's not working, but um, they just get gutted and, and parted out now, and it's, it's a crazy, shocking, Change. Time Crisis 4, one side not working, $400, probably a good deal. $100 for a not working Operation Wolf. Um, if we didn't have so many, I think that'd be cool. $300 for the Site 4 that just could not boot. We saw this at the last auction, because I, I remarked, I thought it was really fun that they had a ticket um, 
win tickets kind of thing on a Area 51 Site 4 that doesn't have a, any redemption mode. So, um, didn't work. It looks like it's just the hard drive. Maybe some guy could deal $300, but I think there's also probably a lot of you who would say $300 for a broken game sounds high. So, all right, guys. So, you never know what's going to show up in an auction. And uh, generally, if it has value, the auctioneers love to sell it. So, this is kind of cool. A work table sold for $275. It looks like it's got an air compressor and everything. Uh, seems like a good deal. I might have bought it if I was here at the time. Uh, and then a nice $150 for kind of a, a tool storage. Pretty cool. Um, then they had a nice stoplight here. Um, I don't see a tag on it. Maybe it wasn't for sale. It was cool. Then a cannon. Um, sold for $200 after these um, allegedly fires. Uh, really cool. Uh, a lot cooler than some of those brooms that they had here today. Then a bunch of uh, sit down games. I'm not going to. Uh, go through each of the prices, but you see a few hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars on each. These things can earn if you have like a laundromat or you know, um, a gro Asian grocery store or something. You'll put these out there and you'll make a decent, decent amount of money. Over there, you've got what looks like a nice Miss Pack, if I remember correctly. That was the 16 one. Looks like they got 800 for it. Not bad, not bad. Next to a couple of extreme huntings. These cabinets always look pretty good, um, but the monitors got burned really fast. So it looks like 125. I assume this is someone who's bought them and moved them over. 350 for one, 125 for another. Probably uh, decent. If you're just gonna put them out somewhere, it's going to uh, earn earn pretty well. So, um, yeah. And then we had a bunch of parts. You've got, you had the, the Coke machine. I don't know, I assume it didn't turn on 600 or, no, I don't know if that's 400 or 600. It looks like a four or a six. Um, I don't know. They also got $100 for this kind of crazy um, arcade contraption that's interesting i mean there's a lot of work that went into it right to, to do like a rubik's cube arcade but hundred dollars seems high and then let's just kind of walk through the pins really quick because um, it looks like people are trying to move them pretty fast uh, we've got a nice fan that they sold for 150. Uh, as someone who owns warehouses these industrial fans that's that's probably a pretty good deal um, and then we're gonna hit up what happened. We had Funhouse sell for $36.50. Um, that's, that's not a bad deal, not a great deal. This one was in okay shape. Uh, it needs a little bit of work, but uh, I, if we didn't already have a Funhouse, I would have been looking at my own. Uh, whoa, $3,200 for the Corvette. That's pretty high, guys. I don't want to insult this guy. So it looks like a home buyer got kind of. Um, excited uh, and, and kind of fell into a uh, trap of one of the resellers. Not that either side should really regret the situation, but it's clear they came to try to buy that game probably. That was probably what they wanted. Um, I think that that's, that's a little high even for, I mean, I, I would not, it's not a great pinball. And I, I'm trying to be nice because uh, I feel like that that 3200 price uh, is pretty extreme for that, especially after auction fees and everything, it starts pushing into that 4,000 level for a Valley Corvette. Um, but you know, if, if, that's, if that makes the person happy, hopefully it does, um, that's cool. It looks like about a Space Invaders for 1900. This was working okay, um, but it's kind of rough. Not something we can use, but I, I do love it. It's a nice wide body pen. It's very famous, a high production number pen too. You'll see them pop up a lot. Oh. A, a stern, stern world poker tour. Three thousand dollars plus fees. Um, God, this pinball sucks. This is a bad pinball. Um, well, this was this was really the dark days when we weren't sure what was going to happen. And I mean, of course, he, someone got paid money to make this back glass. Uh, it, kind of, kind of shocking. Uh, you, you know, in, in like a lower quality kind of barcade. Um, you could see this, uh, or it, to, be, it, to be fair, if this was just thrown in the back of a bar, it might actually be kind of a fun find. Uh, but if you're gonna put it in like an, an actual, ar I, you, you should not put this in like an actual arcade, trying to trying to like be known for your quality. It's 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 maybe reliable. I don't know. I I played it a lot. I I, I was aware of this, and and yeah, I, I, not too into it. Can't believe they got three grand for it, but here we are. Uh, the follow-up funhouse is a slightly rougher one. Uh, looks like a twenty-three hundred. Not a bad price, um, but they, they both had their own issues, their own roughness. Um, oh, and then guys, we got the Spooksville, the stand-up, the mirror pinball. 
Uh, again, haven't seen very many of these in my entire life. 1550. I'm really glad I wasn't around because I would have probably tried to buy it. You don't see these working. Um, and this one still needed to work, but it was all there. It's, it was all functional, pretty cool. Um, Bobby Orr Power Play for 1600. Um, high pin prices here, but this you can see this being really cool in a man cave. Um, this rough sorcerer, sorcerer is a great Williams game. Um, really, really great game. Uh, but this one was was mostly this was, this one was rough, not super salvageable. Uh, 1050. Um, cool. I mean, I, I think that's a fine value uh, for the pin you're ending up. And then a, one of these, I don't remember what they call them. Uh, I guess it's not the wedge, not one, no, it's not a wedge head, but a little small um, discount Williams game, $400. If it worked, it was good. I didn't get the chance to play it. Um, pit stop, but they made like hundreds of these pinballs that were themed all kind of similar with that kind of deco style art. Um, and I think they're all fun. I wish I had like a really mint version of one in my house. Um, I don't think I could, but, and they're not really loved by pinball people, but I think that they're really, really kind of like a neat experience.